evening and welcome uh, welcome to church tonight. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. We want to, uh, by way of announcement, uh, remember prayer meeting here tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Everyone is encouraged to participate in that. Uh, we're having grief share group. It'll be at our church on Tuesday evenings from 7 to 9 p.m. until November the 1st. There's a registration fee of $15, which will cover the cost of the workbook. Sister Yvonne Waters will be leading the sessions. If you have any questions, please see Sister Yvonne about that. We will have a Widow and Widowers Fellowship here at the church. That will be Thursday, September the 8th at 11.30 a.m. Uh, we would like to expand this ministry. So if you have a family member or friend that is a widow or widow, widower, Please encourage them to come out and join us. Uh, if you plan to attend or, and are bringing someone, please sign up in the sanctuary main entrance. Now, a Snow Branch Camp meeting is coming. That will be September 14th through the 18th. The services will begin at 7 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday and 6 p.m. on Sunday. The camp meeting will be held in the Family Life Center, so make plans now to attend that. <clears throat> also, coming up in September is Pastor's Appreciation. We're going to be celebrating five years with Brother and Sister Bateman and Sister Annika, and we're excited about that this milestone in their ministry here at our church. So we'll be uh, having our ser – that service will be on Sunday, September the 11th, but we'll have a barbecue cookout here at the church on Saturday, September the 10th. We plan to eat around 1 o'clock, but please get here. We're going to start up around 11 and we'll eat around one there'll be activities games and blow-ups for the kids there'll be special singing uh for the adults it'll be sister rita sister brenda and sister lillian we're going to entertain us with with good songs um so we plan on having a we're planning on having a good fun day in the lord that day to celebrate five years with brother and sister bateman so please come on out bring your chair and uh plan on having a good day to enjoy the lord that day and uh, that is all that I have. Now, uh, Sister Jennifer will come around with some prayer requests. Well, Sister Jennifer said that there's no prayer requests, so we're going to jump right on in and get ready to pray. Amen. How many of you glad to be in the Lord's house tonight? Amen. Good to see you back with us here, and we want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings upon this service tonight and all that he's going to do. If you have a need tonight and you want to make it known, let's continue to remember um, – William and Kay Lilly um, uh, from Vanceboro. William is still uh, recovering from his, had a, a, a terrible time with his back surgery. I want to continue to remember him. It was so good to see Sister Shirley this morning in church. And, you know, we all know her, what her battle has been for the longest time. So anybody else have a special need? Do you want to make known uh, tonight? Anybody on the platform, anywhere? Amen. Just remember Sister Judy tonight and uh, Boyd there. Amen. Remember her tonight. Uh, if you have an unspoken need, lift your hands and let the Lord see it. And he already knows it anyway. But would you stand and let's take our time and let's go to the Lord in prayer. This is the important part of the service because this is, we open with this. We ask God's blessings upon our service. We invite him. He lives in us. But we, we're looking for a corporate presence tonight. When we're, people are gathered together in the name of the Lord, he said, I'll be there in the midst there too. So if you'll bow your heads and hearts tonight, and we'll just begin to pray, Lord, we just worship you tonight, God. Father, we thank you, Lord. We welcome, welcome the ministry of the Spirit. What is going to take place tonight, God? We lay it before you tonight, God. You know what we have need of? The Bible said even before we pray, even before we speak, God, you already know what we're going to say. But, Lord, the Bible declares that we come to you. We seek, we ask, we knock, Lord God. Lord, it's open. You hear, Lord, and we find, God. So tonight, Lord, we just bring all of our needs before you, Lord. We thank you for the service that took place this morning, how you met us here. Lord, blessed and touched, God, tonight. But tonight is a new service, Lord, and so we commit ourselves afresh to you. Lord, we, want to, we don't want to take any service for granted. We want to take any opportunity to come to the house of God and just throw it away or waste it or uh, somehow trivialize it. Lord, this is a meeting place that great God Jehovah shows up, Lord. And so tonight there's someone here that needs healing in their body. A, a miracle touch, God. We pray, God, that you grant that miracle. Lord, if there's need of salvation, sanctification, the baptism in the Spirit tonight, God. You, Lord, the needs are so many, Lord. And Father, we pray for our nation. 
And we pray for our loved ones, Lord. Pray for our family, Lord. And God, we're believing you for a great revival, Lord. We're gonna we're gonna believe and declare that for the goodness of the Lord God, because we know, Lord God, that it's your uh, will that you would pour out your Spirit in this last day. So would you lift your hands all over this place? Would you agree with me in prayer tonight? God, send a revival. Let it start with me. Holy Ghost, stir me tonight. Holy Ghost, have your way in me tonight, Lord. Holy Ghost, have your way in this service, Lord. We commit it unto you, Lord. Come on, everybody, and say amen. Let's remain standing. Let's get ready to worship God. Higher, 
praise him tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to do that second verse one more time. And I tell you what, I think when we get to that part where it says, he is worthy, I think we got to stand up and do the wave. Now, you know, the wave started in the Pentecostal church, actually in the Church of God camp meeting in Charlotte. I was there when it started. There was a wave started from one end of the uh, congregation to the other. And it was not by any man's doings. It was all the Holy Spirit. And, you know, they picked it up there in Charlotte with the ball team, and all I'm doing now. But I think when he is worthy, stand up and let's give it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sing it, sister. The Lord has been so good to me. He watched my soul.
with my praise. I just came to magnify. I just came to magnify. I just came to Praise in the house tonight. Hallelujah. You might be seated when you can. Hallelujah. We're going to give Paul a minute to breathe now. Amen. Pray. Let's give the choir and the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Woo, thank you, Lord. That's good to me, y'all. That's good to me. You ever, you get ready to go to a, maybe a restaurant somewhere and they got that nice big buffet and you look out there and you, you see it and you sit down and you eat, get a big plate and you get done with it and you thought how good that was. I tell you, that's a, we were feasting then on the presence of the Lord. I've just come to magnify the Lord tonight. Amen. Oh, I love, thank you for worshiping like that. But you know what? I ought not to thank you. We ought to thank God, hadn't we? Amen. Because he put it in us, amen. Because if he hadn't done what we, he's done for us, we wouldn't worship the way we do. Amen. We're going to take the offering up at this time. The, the buckets are up here. There's some in the back. We want to thank you again. I, I, we say this all the time, but appreciate all that we give uh, for the work of the Lord toward the missions, the giving, the offerings, the tithe that the, uh, that the church gives as we give to the Lord, and the tithe of the tithe, the extra top that goes to, to missions. You, you, we've been doing, y'all been doing it for many, many years, and I tell you, we've just been the recipients of God's provision and pouring out. I mean, hadn't God been good to us? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to ask you to get out of your seats and come and let's worship and give in tonight. God bless you. Father, we love you tonight. Lord, thank you for the, for the amazing presence that we feel in this place tonight. Lord, I, I did. I come to magnify you, Lord. I don't ever, ever want to take for granted how good you've been to me and my family. When I think about your goodness and all that you've done for me, I can't help but to shout I can't help but to praise. I can't help but to dance when I think of your goodness, Lord. Now, Father, this is an opportunity for us to give back to the work of the Lord. Thank you for provision, for, for providence. Thank you, Lord, that time and time again, you've opened the windows of heaven and pulled out a blessing that we weren't able to contain. God, now take what we're about to give. Let it go forth and uh, produce great fruit in the kingdom of God. And we'll, we'll just continue to say, what a faithful God you are. God bless you as you give tonight. Get out of your seats and come and give. Hallelujah. Thank you for the way that you're giving the offerings tonight. Choir's going to sing another song tonight, and we may have reversed these. I don't know. We might have just sang this one first, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they're both good. But, uh, anyway, this one, it takes you back. It makes you realize where you came from and realize that uh, the only thing we've got is our hope in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. I'm going to dedicate this to Anthony tonight. He really likes this song. <laughs> Savior, I felt the fire from 
quite the same, a prodigal return. Everybody would just stand tonight. 
Now it's your turn. We want you to help us sing this chorus. Is, you know, it just says, As the deer panteth for the water, my soul. Does our soul long after the Lord tonight? Because he is our heart's desire, we should long to worship him. So let's worship him together. Just think about the goodness of God tonight. Where would we be without him? We need him. He's water to a dry and thirsty soul. Let's sing this song together as you think about that tonight. How much we need the water of the Spirit of God to flood our souls here tonight. Sing that last part again, and I long. I long to work. Sing it again, church. Sing it again. Sing it again. Oh, I long to worship. Why don't you do that right now? Would you lift your hands, holy hands, lift it up all over this sanctuary? Lord, we bless you. Come on and bless him. Come on and worship him now. Oh, we let's enter in tonight. Let's enter in. He'll seek those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Lord, we worship you tonight, God. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Oh. Thank you, Lord, tonight, God. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long, Lord, I long to worship you. 
I long to worship you. I long to worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you all tonight. Amen. Thank you all tonight. Let us continue to be in a worshipful presence here this evening while this choir and this praise team and musicians have led us beautifully into the presence of the Lord. You know, I thank God for His presence tonight. I thank you for entering in and being willing to worship. So many times I believe church, we miss, churches miss by not taking this sacred opportunity to, to go a little deeper, go a little further, stay up here a little bit longer, hands lifted a little higher. What a, what a wonderful experience it is to worship the Lord. Would you say amen? Psalm 119, verse 18. I'm going to preach, God opened the eyes of my heart. The psalmist said, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The way I might translate this in my own vernacular, Lord, open my eyes that I may see the beautiful and the wonderful things in your word. Heavenly Father, we again bow in your presence. I'm just overwhelmed by your presence tonight, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I thank you for every hallelujah that was raised, every praise the Lord that was uttered, every hand that is lifted in adoration of our King, every note that has been played on these instruments, the voices that rang out and sang the songs of Zion, Lord, that all, Lord, led to this part of the service. Now prepare us for the word of God that's being preached. And then, Lord, as we come later in this altar service, let something transformational happen around these altars tonight, God. Let somebody's life be changed, saved, set free, delivered, sanctified, filled with heaven's sweet Holy Ghost, miracle signs and wonders and healings. God, never let us forget that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the people of God said amen and amen. God bless you as you're seated in his presence once again. Amen. So good to see everybody here tonight in the Lord's house. And uh, we had a wonderful day in the Lord this morning with the baby dedications and preaching and worshiping the Lord and uh, about celebrating the family. Uh, I want to, uh, this young man over here to my right, Anthony, I'm going to put him on the spot. He's kind of re rededicated his life back to the Lord, getting plugged in. Let's give the Lord praise. And, brother, I just want you to look around. This is your church family. We love you, brother. We're going to pray for him. Come on here. Amen. One more the enemy had to turn loose of, amen. How many know when God gets a hold of some, it don't matter what the devil's trying to do, amen, God can help. So we want, we want to encourage Anthony in the things of God, and we want to let him know we've got his back, and we're going to pray for him and, uh, and just pray his strength in the Lord tonight. Let us look at some things tonight in the Word of God, and uh, I'm going to be going, uh, brother, if you'll switch on over to Ephesians chapter 1. And Before I leave here, though, I, it, where the psalmist said, Open thou mine eyes, that I might be... Behold the wondrous things out of the book of the law. In other words, the psalmist is saying, God, you, the, the, the presence of, 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 of your, your spirit is amazing. Being in your, in your house is amazing. But God, don't let me forget one thing. Let me, let me see tonight. Let me see, the psalmist says, what is in this wonderful book? What are you trying to teach me? I'm telling you that if our eyes were open to the realities of really the word of God and the wonderful things that are in there, that it would eliminate a lot of the doubt and the worry about things that we go through. I want to encourage somebody tonight, amen, that the Spirit of the living God is here tonight to open our eyes and give us a greater understanding of the Word of God. Somebody say amen. I don't know about you. I've not learned it all and neither have you, but I'm asking the Lord tonight in this prayer of Paul that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the, of the glory of his inheritance in the saint. Did you get that? I don't think you did, so I'm going to read it again. That the eyes of your understanding be 
that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. How many of you know there is a hope in this thing? The Bible talks about the coming of the Lord is the, is the blessed hope. Uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not seen. Then he says, I want you to know what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Come on, somebody, and say amen. God wants to reveal to us how wonderful he is through the pages of the scripture. You know, I've always been mesmerized by the way that we have services. I grew up in the church. Uh, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents have been in the church, and uh, this this church has been going on, this particular one here, 100 years, the New Testament for 2,000. You can go even further back with the Temple of Solomon and uh, and even go further back and, and uh, in, in the, the synagogues, and you can go further back in the Tabernacle of the Witness. There was always somebody that would get up and read God's Word to a group of people and how that that those people here, like you are tonight, are seated in, in this building and you're wanting to hear something that God wants to open up to the understanding of our heart and our eyes. We don't come here because we've got something uh, less better to do. One man said, nobody ever stayed home on Sunday night to punish themselves. I'm going to say that again. Nobody stays home on Sunday night to punish themselves. <laughs> That's a joke. You'll get it later. We came tonight because we wanted something from God. We came tonight because we wanted to feel his touch. We came tonight hoping that there was something. Maybe somebody here is desperate and they need a, a crumb from the master's table. Maybe somebody here is facing something and hoping you'll get a word or, or a touch from God somehow. Maybe it's in a song when Brother Ken is saying, all my hope is in Jesus. Maybe that something stirred inside of you, amen, that gave you hope again that you're not in this thing by yourself. Maybe somebody come here tonight that was down and discouraged in their walk with God and God through somehow through a song, through a message uh, in, in the altar, uh, somehow, some way will communicate. So we must be like the psalmist tonight when we say, Lord, open my eyes. We can be like the apostle Paul to the Ephesians and say, God, he's saying that our, our eyes would be enlightened. I've, I've come by to tell somebody tonight that the devil will rock the church to sleep if we're not careful. The devil will, will, will take an advantage. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4 and 4 that the God of this world hath blinded them. It is his job to blind uh, the world out there. And then if he can get sleep in our eyes, if he can dull our senses, I'm going to tell you, sometimes I'm just going to be transparent. Sometimes it's hard to read this book. Sometimes, and I, when I'm saying we get weary, and maybe even the Word of God may become dull to us. Maybe it, it's become laborious to us where we're only reading uh, out of a compulsory uh, feeling that we need to do a devotion or we, we need to spend time with God. And yeah, I'm going to get up in the morning and read. But can I tell you that even when it gets dull or possibly lay, uh, we become laborious with it and we become go through a, just a routine or a rut, amen, we need to pray this way that God would open our eyes and enlighten it to us one more time that we can see the wonderful things. Come on, when the Bible talks about the blood of Jesus, we've sang about it, we've preached about it, we've talked about it, but oh, when I begin to see what the blood of Jesus can really do, it washes away all my sins, never to be remembered. And come on here now, church, when I begin to see how glorious Christ is on the cross of Calvary, we sing about him. We talk about the glory of the Lord. God, let me see thy glory. We sing that song as the deer panteth after the water. So my soul longeth after thee. When is the last time that we felt such a pull to God that we longed after him like we did our necessary food? Job said, uh, let, your, let your words, the words of your mouth be more, be better to me than the food that I eat. Somebody say, man, I'm telling you it's time that we 
we get back one more time to really realizing how great a God that is we really serve. We sing about the cross. We talk about the cross. But I'm not ashamed of the preaching of the cross of Calvary for it is the power of God unto salvation. Gee, through this kind of preaching, men might be saved. Through this kind of preaching, men might be delivered. You don't have to leave here the same way. You can be radically changed. The devil's rocking us to sleep. He was oh, glory, yeah, glory, glory, send your glory. No, God. Let us get a glimpse one more time of what your glory is really like. Let us get an, an, an Lord, open my eyes. Let me be like Isaiah. I, I'm telling you, we may not have the exact experience that Isaiah said. He saw the Lord high and lifted up. He saw the, uh, the train, the smoke fill the temple. He said, woe unto me. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell among an unclean people. We need an Isaiah type of experience. One more time. Open my eyes, God, that I can get a glimpse of your glory. I'm telling you, we need to go back and do our first works again. We need to go back and get the excitement of how it was when we got saved and how, look, a while ago when she was singing, I just came to magnify the Lord. Everybody in this building ought to got out of their seat, got in the aisle and begin to march around. Come on here. You're saying you're trying to manipulate. No, I'm not trying. I'm trying to tell you one more time. We need to get a glimpse of him. And if we're going to sing about magnifying the Lord, somebody needs to say, I just came to magnify the Lord. I just came to glorify him tonight. Man, I didn't come here to play church. Look around us, people of God. Look what's going on in the world. I'm a watchman on the wall. Maybe not much of one, but I'm still a watchman to warn the church what is going. Look around. Don't let the devil rock us to sleep. This word opens means to reveal, to loosen, to open wide. To behold means to look intently at. Wondrous means great and wonderful. High, things too high for us to understand. Psalm 119, 34 says, Give me understanding and I shall keep the law. I shall observe it with my whole heart. I'm t Church, listen to me. The devil is blinding. The world. He's got the world blinded. But he's trying to blind the church to, to, to make to us not to realize how precious this really is here. What we're doing tonight is precious. What, we're pre what I'm preaching on tonight, you, you look past me and my ability. Look past uh, 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 our, our ability to sing or whatever. Look at what we're singing about. Look at what I, we're preaching about. Look, at, look about what we're praising about. God is trying to reveal himself to us every time that we come to the house of God. This is not a game, church. This is not a routine or something that we go through. This is a life-changing experience. God said when, I'm, when people are gathered together, he said, there I am in their midst. Oh, God, help me tonight. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said, he said, I'm here right now. God, help me. Help me to reverence you. Help me to see you. Let me behold the beauty, the whole your beauty in, the, in, in this tabernacle. The holiness is in this place. Help me to see tonight what you want to do. It's just not coming in here. Some of us can't hardly wait to leave. Maybe, I hope not. Some of us may be here tonight that you're just going through a routine because it's what you do on Sunday night. Maybe some of us are in a rut. We're just going through until we can get something better. But, but the psalmist said, Lord, open my eyes that I might behold the wondrous works. I'm still telling you, he's still a wonder worker. He's still a miracle maker. He's still a way. Come on here, church. He's still a way maker. Give me understanding, God. Psalm 1, 1 in 73, I'm going to go through a few of these. Thou hands have fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandment. The man, this man of God, wanted understanding. See, the Spirit of the Lord anointed David. 
But he didn't have the baptism in the Holy Ghost the way we did. In the Old Testament, the, the Bible said that, that it was different. They, the Spirit of the Lord would come on men, Elijah and Elisha and David and different prophets of old. and They would prophesy and Samson, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. and He was to be able to do great exploits. But now the Bible said that we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. The third person of the Godhead dwells inside of us. Let that, let that sink in a minute, Pentecostal people. Let, let, let that sit in, uh, sink in just a minute. We are walking, talking miracles. Every one of us, amen, conduits and vessels that God wants to use in that, this last day. God wants to get some people in, in this church tonight to get an eye-opening experience, amen. I am who the Lord says that I am. I am more than a conqueror. I'm seated on the right hand, hallelujah, in heavenly places, amen. I am redeemed. Come on, somebody. The devil can't kill me. The devil didn't call me. He can't uncall me. The devil didn't give me this anointing. The devil didn't give me my salvation and my sanctification and the baptism in the Holy Spirit and power from on high. The devil didn't give it to me and he can't take it away. Somebody help raise your hands and bless the most high God in his house tonight God you made me give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments Psalm 104 says through thy precepts I get understanding therefore I hate every false way now let me stop here when you understand what the scripture is saying you don't patty cake with sin you don't put up with it I tell you right now the closer you get to God the more you'll hate sin not sinners but hate sin I despise what I see happening in the modern church. It makes my blood boil. When I see, listen, when I see what is going on in the political realm, when I see what the government is doing and I see all, all of this anti-Christ spirit rising in the land, it makes me angry and I have to be careful and back off. But can I tell you what upsets me and makes me madder than all that's going on in a corrupt uh, governmental system is when I see the Word of God being trampled underfoot. When I see uh, churches patty caking with sin and church folk patty caking and, and compromising with sin. Amen. I hear the word of the Lord. He said, come out from among them and be ye separate. Come on here now, church. Help me just a minute. We need to get understanding that God hates sin. God hates sin. I said God hates sin. When we get understanding, we can look past the compromise. We can look past the, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the discussion that tries to interrupt our way of thinking. I'm telling you, when whole denominations are sliding off into the abyss of apostasy, it's time for us to wake up. Hear me tonight, church. We got to be careful. Preach. Uh, we've got preachers. We've got pastors. You're saying, "Oh, brother, you're just casting stones." No, I'm telling you, we need understanding and discernment. I'm gonna tell you, the devil can come to church. Devils do come to church. Sometimes they join the church. But I'm telling you right now, when the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost starts to move, they can't take it, amen. And when the truth is being broadcast and published, amen, and there's a stand, amen, come on, somebody, they will not endure and they'll leave out of here. The Bible said if you resist the devil, he'll flee. We don't have to put up with his mess. He said in 104, we said we'll hate sin. 144, give me understanding and I shall live. 125 says, give me understanding. God does this by his spirit. We're the most blessed people on the face of the earth. I have to repent sometime. Oh, oh, here you go, Bateman. What are you talking about? I repent. God, forgive me for ever doubting you. Forget, you know, I got what God has promised he's going to do. What God has said he's going to do. Come on here, church. Why should I worry? Why should I fret? God has never, ever let me down. Come on, somebody. That's a good place to praise the Lord. God has never let me down. He's always been. Why should I worry? Why should I fret about anything? The Bible said, John 16 and 13, the spirit of truth has come, and he will guide you in all truth. And I'll give, give you an example real quick. I've shared this before. I've lived long enough now to see fads come and go into church. 
And I've lived long enough now when little Susie or little Johnny grows up into teenagers and they begin to do things that, that are contrary to the Word of God. The dullness of the eyes starts to blind the believer's heart when because it's their children, they overlook certain things. Let me tell you something. God opened our eyes. Help us to look at our children and our grandchildren and one another, amen. I don't care who we are, preacher, elder, Sunday school teacher, whatever your position is, amen. The truth of God's word is the truth, amen. Let God be true and every man a liar. That's a good place to say amen. Psalm 119 and 30, let me read that. Let me go back here and read that real quickly. 119 and 30, I know I've got a bunch of scriptures. I've stuck... Unto thy testimonies, O Lord, put me not to shame. God's made a way, people. God's made a way so straight, and it's a narrow way. Don't let, don't let your eyes get dim now. God wants to reveal himself into a greater way. I tell you what, when you go through something, you start, you, Lord, you need him. You, need, uh, you, you cry out, Lord, where you at? I, I love what my grandfather, one time he was in the hospital. He was, had his heart split chest split wide open, had chest uh, heart surgery and all kind of thing and I went to spend a night with him and he moaned and groaned all night and I talked to him another day or two later and he, he said he told me, he said he cried out and he said, he said, oh God where you at where you at and he said God spoke to him now, you have to understand my granddaddy was a man of very few words, un very unlike me a very quiet, unassuming, very wise godly man and he said a voice spoke to him out of the corner of that room in that darkness of that, of that hospital bed and God said I'm with you I'm here to tell you tonight, you say, well, that's not very profound. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I heard a voice, and it was God's voice or the voice of the Lord Jesus and said, I'm with you. God wants to open our eyes. Let me tell you something. God's with us, every one of us. God's watching over this church. Come on here. Come on here, God. This thing's going to still work out the way that God says it's going to work out. Don't be so troubled in your heart, amen. Oh, lift up your head, people of God, because our redemption draweth now. Look, see what is happening. I'm trying to help us tonight. We, our eyes are being dimmed to the coming of the Lord. Look around us and see what is happening. It's happening in the churches. Denominations are falling left and right. You said, Brother Bateman, why do you keep bringing that up? Because if we're not careful, we're going to be in the same boat. I, I, you know, denominations are splitting wide open. Why? Because they, they've, the, the, they've bought the lie of the devil. They no longer believe the truth of God's word. I want the truth. Come on, somebody. I need the truth. I need, I need, I don't, you say, you say, well, that'll never happen to me. That'll never happen to us. The Bible says, take heed lest ye fall. The psalmist said, open thou mine eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of thy law. I'm going to go now to 2 Kings chapter 6. I'm going to give you some background. I'm not going to, I'm not going to preach much longer tonight, but I want to get in your, get in your uh, understanding tonight that God wants to open our eyes clearly to see the truths of his word. Gone is the day, and it's never been a day for it, but gone is the day of compromise. We better hold on to truth as we know it. Come on here. And I'm telling you right now, it's time. If you're confused about anything, push that plate away. Get on your face before God and start seeking the Lord, and he'll open your understanding up. Yes, he will. I'm telling you, we're getting ready to have in September. We're going to have a, we're going to do, I'm putting together a plan to have 21 days of prayer and fasting, a prayer initiative for this church. We need it. <laughs> you need it. I need it. We need, to, we need to be clear on what we're, God is calling us as a church and where we're going. Come on here in the season that we live in. Anybody want to be, anybody excited? God, open our eyes of understanding where are we headed as a church? Where are we headed as a people? Oh, I know some folks trying to write us off. I know some folks trying to uh, put us down and say this and that. But let me tell you something. I'm going to believe the word of the Lord. I'm going to believe the report of God. And it's nothing changed. They're, they're going to always talk about us. Any church that tries to do what's right is going to be ridiculed. And I'm telling you what, is we're, going to, we're going to say, Holy Ghost, lead us. You say, now preacher, let me help you before I get into this story. When you come here, you give him your best worship. When you come here, you give him your best praise. Well, you say, Brother Bateman, I'm a, I'm a quiet person. Well, give, give, him, give him your, your quiet praise. 
Give him your best. When I'm not a demonstrative, emotional person, I understand, but you give the Lord your best every time you come here. Let's come in here with a mindset that we're going to pray. We're going to seek the Lord. Open. Lord, I want my heart open. Lord, let me receive something from the Word of God. When you come to Sunday school, come, come like a child that's hungry for the Word of God, like a baby bird in a nest. God, I want to hear from you. Don't be like a wooden Indian. I get on Annika. She'll shout at the house. I won't get you too bad, baby. She'll shout at the house. I said, but don't, when you get to church, don't stand there like a wooden Indian. Praise the Lord. When you come, look, oh, yeah, you know, you're riding, down the, you're riding down the road and you're singing to the top of your voice and you're off key and you don't care. When you come to God's house, you sing to the top of your voice. If it's off key, we don't care. Praise him, church. I'm going to give you background. Elisha has insight into the king of Syria's war plan. It's a beautiful, I love this story. I love this story. Now, hear me. This, is help, this story helped me through many a dark night of the soul. The king of Syria, every time he had a plan to make war, the king of Israel knew what he was going to do. And finally, the king of Syria, he cried out. He called all of his guys in. Just tell me which one of y'all is on the king of Israel's side because I know you're telling him all of my business. He didn't understand. There, there won't no internet. There won't no. There won't no rip tape recorders. There won't no phones. Now, he, he, how does how does the king of Israel know everything we're gonna? If we go to go, if we're gonna go there to get him. He's over there. If we go over there, he's over here. Somebody is a friend of the king of Israel. You're telling him all my plans. One of them said, "Hey, it ain't us. There's a man of God in Israel, and he's telling the king of Israel everything about your plans." And so the king of Syria said, go get him. I'm, I'm sure he wanted to kill him or take him, probably take, I know take him captive or at least kill him. And here, here we see that with the order now that the, the Syrian army has gone to get the man of God. And the servant of Elisha here, of the man of God, was risen early and had gone forth. And the Bible says, behold, a host, the Syrian army, had compassed the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, oh good heaven, Master, what are we going to do? What can we do? What shall we do? And Elisha, I can just see him. He was probably asleep. He got up, rubbed his eyes, probably took a sip of water. I'm just embellishing the story of my part. And he said, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Did you get that? You say, well, preacher, what does that mean? Is that no matter what comes against us, there's always more that will be with us than there are that are against us. Verse 17 and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, this is my prayer for us tonight. This is my prayer. And we're going to come and pray. I'm going to get in just a moment to get the musicians and the singers to come back. I don't know what y'all are going to sing, but I want, to, I want God to open some eyes in this place tonight. I want God to open my eyes. I want, I want to see clearer than I've ever seen. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, talking about his servant, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of this young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now, I want you to understand, I can't see these tonight, and we can't either unless the Lord opens our eyes. Surrounding this church is a host of heaven. Surrounding your home, those of us that serve the Lord, there is a host of heaven. The Bible said the angels of the Lord encamp about around them that fear him. There are more for us and with us than there are 
against us. And one night, one angel killed 185,000 Assyrians. So if the angels of the Lord encamp about us, we've got more than one angel watching over us. I've come by to tell the church, God help us open our eyes, amen. There is nothing too hard for what God wants to do here amongst his people at the Alleg Church of God in 20. 22. Come on, somebody, and say amen. I know we quote all these scriptures, but I still say it tonight. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in this world. God lives inside of me. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He sanctified me. He's baptized me with heaven's sweet Holy Ghost. The angels of the Lord encamp around about them that fear him. And one more time, there are more with us than there are with them. Somebody lift a holy hand and thank God for the truth of his word tonight. Would you bring 1 Corinthians, I know I didn't have this in the note, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 tonight up, and I'll close with this. Would y'all come on back just a minute? Well, I'm not going to wear you out tonight. Come on back, all the musicians and singers. Come on back for just a season here. First Corinthians 2, 9 and 10. I'm going to read both of these four verses. We hear this a lot at funerals. We hear it a lot about the future, but the, the, in its content, and it, it's, it's appropriate to use that, and I've shared this with you before because many people leave off verse 10. It says, but as it, has, is, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, did you get that? I have not seen it. Ears not heard it. It's not entered into the heart of man. The things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But verse 10 lets us know something. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. God can open our eyes to things that we've not seen, that we've not heard. We've not, it's not entered into the heart of man. Let me tell you something. I'm praying. I'm not praying for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost just so we can feel good. I'm not praying. Uh, I'm not even praying for a healing revival. That I want to see a healing revival. I'd love to see God touch people and there would be bona fide medical miracles that, that, that the, the, the doctors could not understand or explain. And I believe God can do it and I believe God wants to. But I'm praying God for a, a harvest of souls. Brother, just like Brother Anthony. I pray he's the first of many that God reached down and touched. Come on here. I have not seen. Look, look. What I have seen is, 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 is an epidemic of alcoholism and drug abuse and immorality. Come on here. People bound by addictions and bound by what, no matter what it is, whether it's, whether it's lustful things or alcohol or dope or, or, or pursuit of, of pleasure. All of these things going. But you know what my eye, what I want God to open my eyes is to look out and see the harvest that is out here. The Bible said, I have not seen, here, not heard, nor to enter in the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them. But the Spirit hath revealed them unto us. God says, I'll show you. I'll show you what I can do. Oh, I hear the naysayers. Many people say we're living what is, what is called a, a postmodern society. Statistics tell us that this next generation, Annika's age and up to in the early 20s, don't believe that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. Many of them believe and all kind of alternative lifestyle. You know why? It's because the God of this world has been successful in blinding this next generation to the truths of God's Word. And I'm telling you, I believe God's going to raise up a church, and I'm going to be in it. I'm going to be right in the middle of it, amen. A sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, set apart church, amen, that the gates of hell cannot prevail, that it go forth. And see souls come to the, an altar. People delivered. Come on, church. Y'all help me now. Come on and join with me. Come on, stand.
I want you to, I'm, I'm, I want y'all to come on. Come on, let's come to, just stand or kneel, whatever you're comfortable doing. I want you to ask him as you come. Come on, come on. I don't want to have to beg you to come to the altar. Come on, we've been coming to the altar all our lives.